So uh, continuing our discussion on the, uh, the date time picker, um, there's an option here to uh, force the user to make a selection from the date picker and, and not allow them to do their own data entry. So if I turn that on, uh, you can see now that as soon as I click uh, there, um, I can't actually type because the date picker opened up uh, immediately. I can set the low date and the high date and I can also specify what uh, days are uh, disabled and we'll talk more about that uh, a little later. Uh, the OK and Cancel um, button labels only apply in the case where you've it's, it's uh, been configured as a date time picker or just a time picker for the date picker only. There's no buttons because a single click um, closes the, uh, uh, the picker. Uh, here you can see we've turned on the uh, um, the feature uh, to specify a mask. So this is in the case where the user is doing their own typing into the field and not picking from the date picker. So I've specified a uh, mask that's got a date portion and also a time portion. So let's um, uh, take a look at that now. So now if I go into this uh, date picker and um, I start typing, so let's go and I type an A and you can see that nothing happens because an A doesn't meet the requirements of the mask. So I'll type in 12 and as soon as I type in 12 I get the closing slash. Say 12 and then 2001 and now I've typed in a valid date. But if I were to go back and try to type in say an A or a B or a C it, it's not going to accept those characters. So uh, that's... Uh, um, how you can use the mask characters. Um, then another option uh, is to allow date ranges. So a date range is where you're using a single date field to uh, enter uh, two date values. So I've turned on um, allow date ranges here and I've specified that my separator uh, is a, um, a dot dot. Now in the case of a uh, date range your mask would need to basically have uh, uh, um, a second instance of the mask to, uh, to allow for the second date. So just to keep it simple right now I'm going to turn the mask off and now go here and uh, select my first date and then type uh, dot dot and now I can go back into here and choose from the date picker again and choose a second date. So let's go and choose that date over there. So now I've got two dates uh, in the date picker, but I can go back to the first date, click on that, make a change, or go there and click on that and make a change. So um, in the case where you want a prompt for a starting date and an ending date, this is quite useful. Now in the case of the search component in a grid, the uh, date range functionality is automatically turned on uh, so that you can enter uh, dates like this, which is the QBE syntax for a, uh, a date search. Um, so let's go back now to the to the builder, and um, uh, let's talk a little bit now about the low date and the high date. So the low date is basically the lowest date that you can pick on the date picker. So I can go there and I can just type in some explicit value. Um, and the high date is the um, the highest value that you can pick in the date picker. So I could, for example, go here and say that I want the highest date to be, say, November the 15th, 2011. Uh, and so now if I were to go to the um, date picker again and then switch over to months, uh, you can see that I can't go past November the 15th. Now, um, the uh, high and low values, though, instead of being specified explicitly, as, as I've done here, can also be specified by a JavaScript function. So if we go, for example, to these two dates, start date and end date, obviously what I would like is um, when the user uh, selects a start date, so let's go there, for example, and choose, say, August uh, 26th, I would like the low date for this value to be equal to uh, this uh, start date. So you can see here when I click it, August 26 is automatically set now as the lowest date that you can pick. So I can't pick a, uh, an ending date that is before the start date. So let's go and see how we did that. So let's pause now and pick it up in the next video.